Chapter 1, December 15, 2012 Rome Stop thrashing! He pressed me against the stone windowsill, his cutting blue eyes reflecting in the glass, as I watched everyone that I loved marching through the fallen snow toward the mountainside. As Troy's hand slid around my waist, I screamed, slapping my open palms against the window with all my strength. As though he heard me, Wes turned suddenly and fought. I stilled, petrified as he attacked two soldiers before another raised his gun and aimed. He shot West in the chest, and my knees gave out beneath me. Oh, my God! No! Troy caught me before I could fall. I gripped the stone ridge of the window, holding my breath until Jason shouldered West's weight and carried him toward the platform. In the distance, from the high elevation of the tower where I stood, they disappeared into the twilight. I flattened my palms over the cold window, tears burning my eyes. He'll live. He caught my wrists, flattening his own hands over mine against the pane of glass. I wanted you to see them go. I've kept my bargain. You will keep yours. I shook my head, meeting his gaze in the reflection of the window. I can't. I can't. Please, just end this, I begged, my words escaping in a stifled moan. He turned me around to face him, pinning me cruelly to the ledge with his hips. I lifted my face to his, closing my eyes. Please make it quick. You've promised me your complete obedience for their lives. I will give you this night, and only this night, to decide your fate. He caught my chin in his cruel grip, and I sobbed, forcing myself to remain perfectly still. Beginning tomorrow and every night thereafter, if you do not submit to me willingly, I will kill each one of them, one at a time. And Rome, he added, forcing my face to his, I will start with your pretty sister. I remembered Morgan's description of Troy when she'd first met him, before she knew what he was. Sexy, a Greek god. Nauseated, I closed my eyes again, and he released me and took a step back. I won't hurt you, Rome, he added, as if considering. I've already had my fill of torturing you. I told you that in the pool. My thoughts scattered to the day that he drowned me, and his terrifying words played in my mind. I've already had my fun with you in the past. I began to shiver, every bone in my body aching from his merciless grip. You let me take Eva through the fountain, knowing that she'd disappear, I whispered, opening my eyes and gasping for breath. That was the most torturous thing that you could ever do to me. He lowered his face, and I turned away, wincing as his mouth hovered over mine. That is not even close to the unimaginable ways that I could hurt you, Rome. His words racked my body with chills. Please, don't, I begged weakly, knowing I'd be unable to fight him. Everything was confusing, and I tried to focus on evening my breathing. I told you that I wouldn't. Just submit. I felt like throwing up. The bile rose in the back of my throat, and I moaned. I want to see Logan, I begged. Gasping, I sobbed as he pinned himself tightly against me. His hips dug into my stomach, and his tone grew vindictive. Another demand. What have I gotten so far? An unwilling wife. With a sudden rush of adrenaline, I wrenched my wrist from his, flattening my palm and slapping his cheek with all my strength. I'm not your wife. I'm seventeen years old. I'm just a girl, an ordinary girl who never met you until the day in the pool. 
I didn't sleep with your brother or your army. I am not my soul, a fire disgustedly. A leisurely grin spread over his face as he looked down at me. His cheek was stained with my fingerprints, and he raised his eyebrows, towering over me. You're strong, little girl, he taunted. When his lips touched mine, I held my breath, fighting more vomit. Even without a screwdriver. I endured his mouth as it covered mine, scalding tears burning my cheeks as I cried into his mouth. He pulled back. His eyes narrowed as he reached for my face. I tried to wrench away, but he touched my cheek and then my forehead. No! I sobbed weakly, my knees buckling as I swayed. Hot, he murmured, his touch becoming purposeful. The back of his fingers flattened against my forehead. A fever. Ignoring him, I leaned against the stone, my teeth chattering as another chill set in. He shouted for someone, and an undeterminable amount of time later, I was beneath the sheets of a massive four-poster bed with an ebony canopy. I was aware of two women changing my clothes. They removed my jeans and sweater and pulled some type of cool silken fabric over my head. The elder of the two, her graying hair nearly white, gave me water and asked that I swallow two pills. When I tried to resist and spit them out, her voice soothed. Only water and aspirin, she promised. Sleep, though frightening, was irresistible. I woke up saturated in sweat, my hair nearly soaked. The older woman came back in, and I watched her reach for a temporal thermometer next to the bed. Water? I whispered, too weak to lift my head. Yes, she coaxed, sliding her arm beneath my neck to raise my head. My fingers shook as I reached for the glass that she offered me. I need a restroom. There, she replied, gesturing to a door across the room. I will assist you. Thank you, I mumbled, searching her eyes for a moment as I tried to decipher the color. They changed with the light, somewhere between gold and brown. Is he here? Is he coming in? I begged staring at the door and clenching the sheets tightly into my fists. No, he's traveled. You are safe, she replied, her voice gentle with unexpected kindness. Tentatively, I climbed to my feet, and she nodded encouragingly. The fever has broken for now, but will likely return. Where is Eva? I asked, struggling with confusion. How did my daughter get here? I held her in the fountain, and then she was here? She turned to me with kind eyes. The infant was found in the snow, near the mountainside by one of the men. Our king was gone at the time, and we did not know where she had come from. We placed her with a woman his majesty brought over, until his majesty returned to give us counsel. Laurel, I said, remembering the reason why we'd come there. Coughing, I tried to control the heaviness in my chest. Everyone at school was getting sick. I should have known. She was just crying in the snow? I cringed at the thought of how cold she must have been, trying to remain calm and remember that she was alive and finally safe. You should rest, Your Majesty, she encouraged. I ignored her word, cringing at the pain as I swallowed. My throat hurts. Her words registered suddenly, and I scrambled to the door, nearly tripping. Troy traveled? To my world? No, she replied, touching my elbows. Her cool hand supported my weight as I struggled to keep from swaying. No, within this world, your loved ones are safe. And Logan, I begged, preparing for the worst. She nodded once. His Majesty has traveled with his brother in an attempt to acquaint himself with him. He, too, is safe, she repeated, leading me to the door. I thought of Logan and Troy's powerful influence over him and all the other past lives. No, Logan, don't listen to him. Come now, you must care for yourself, 
you'll need